Sky Hobby Corner where we're building the Great Plains PT-20 trainer. Um, guys, this is going to be kind of a short episode because, well, we're just about done. Um, really, all we're going to have to do today is build our ailerons, get those set, and then we're going to strengthen our wing hands where they join together. We'll fiberglass those in as well. So, uh, and then the uh, reason why it's going to be short covering, it takes a little while to explain and uh, help everybody understand how it works. Um, otherwise, this episode would be four hours long. So, we're going to finish our woodwork and uh, get this thing ready to cover, and then we'll start the fun task of sanding it down and getting it ready for covering. All right, we'll see you here in just a second. Okay, here we are. We have our wing panel out. We have our aileron stock. Now remember, there is a front and a back, an up and a down. So make sure it matches your wing. This being the bottom and the angled part being the top as it matches the form of the wing coming down. If you notice, our aileron stock is a little too long. So we're going to have to cut it to match. We have our razor saw ready to go. Then what we do, we'll butt it up against our inboard trailing edge where our control horn is, or our strip aileron horn is. Get it lined up. Then we'll just make a little mark right up against our wingtip trailing edge, like so. But we don't want to cut it there. If we cut it right here on our mark, what's going to happen, our aileron is going to fit snug against our tips here, So what we need, and that won't allow any kind of free movement, especially after we get the covering on. So what we want to do, we want to cut that about an eighth of, a, of an inch short. So I'll just string my tape out, line it up on an inch mark, and come down one eighth of an inch. I'll just make that mark a little longer than the other. That way we can tell what's what. And we'll find a straight edge. Man, this is a mess because I've got two builds going on at the same time. So we'll just use anything we can find that's straight, get it square. Make our cut line. And then we cut it. This is not our aileron, that's strap, so we'll set it off to the side. And then we'll just slide it on in there. It's a pretty good little fit. Okay, now our next part we need to do, we have this um, control horn that we need to mark. Now see, we cut it an eighth of an inch short, so we want to slide that over about a sixteenth of an inch. Split the gap, in other words. And we'll make a mark where that is. The reason we do that, we're going to drill a hole. Let me get my drill, and we will uh, get that hole drilled. Okay, here we are. We got our 764 drill bit. That's what we're going to use to establish the hole on our mark we just made. But first we need to establish the center line along the aileron. The one thing you can do, this is a quarter of an inch thick, so halfway up would be an eighth of an inch, right? The back side of our other aileron, or both ailerons for that fact, is an eighth of an inch. So what you can do, you can butt the two up just like so. Sorry, I'm shaking the table here. And then come and make you a mark. That's exactly how I'm going to do it, but I'm going to turn around here where I can see it. Okay. 
like so. Now we have a center line established. The one thing we're going to drill our hole, I'm going to do it by hand. It's just balsa wood, and I don't want to get too carried away. But we need to go 5 eighths of an inch deep. We don't want to go all the way through. So what I'll do, I'll take my drill bit, put it on here, and then I'm just going to make a little mark. 5 eighths. If I can hold the darn thing still. That way, we know where we need to stop. Just set it down here on the workbench. Right there on our center mark. And just by hand, this is balsa wood, take your time with it. And it'll go. But just because we drill a hole, that's not all we have to do yet. And take our hobby knife and cut clearance out for the control rod itself. What I'm doing, I'm just going from the outside of the hole right here and just cutting a little angle. Like so. If you want, you can take your drill bit and use the side flutes. Hold it in there and give it a little twist. That'll help round out your hole. Get that lined up. And then boom. We have a nailer on. Like so. Another thing that we need to do, we need to get our sanding block. Like so. We need to sand a little bit of an angle so this thing has room to operate after we get it covered and hinged. Take your time. You want to sand it at about a 45 degree angle. You go to your center mark and stop and then do the other side. down it, make sure it looks pretty straight, it looks pretty good. And then the other side. About 45 degrees to our center line. I'm using a pretty aggressive grit. Right here. And if you don't want to do that, I'm just going to show you right quick. We can use our razor plane. Hold it at 45 degrees. Straight 
strip it down. That makes really quick work of it doing it that way, but you gotta be careful because it's easy to overdo it. Just like that. All right, got a nice 45 degree there. We'll take care of the other aileron and uh, we'll come back and we'll uh, strengthen up our center section of our wing. We'll be right back. All right, I got my 30 drop ratio right here. That makes it up really good. And as I mentioned in the uh, Avastar build that we're doing too, um, large batches of epoxy seem to work really good and sometimes too good. So, and what I mean by too good is the uh, set time may be reduced from 30 minutes. So we want to be sure of our movements, but swift at the same time. I'm excited. We're about ready to cover this thing. Doesn't seem like that long ago we started this build. Okay, I got my brush loaded with epoxy. I'm going to start where we started our initial glue and just brush it on. We're going to do this all the way around the wing. And this is actually just like fiberglass and like when you do any kind of a boat repair or a any kind of fiberglass repair, this is the same thing, but instead of using the fiberglass resin, we're using our epoxy, our 30 minute epoxy. Now, and if you really want to get technical about it, our Great Plains 30 minute epoxy, if applied properly, actually weighs less. And you know when you're doing good when the cloth actually goes transparent and you can see the wood underneath it, we know we're doing really good. And what I'm doing, I'm going about a half a brush outside of our fiberglass. Get this trailing edge piece right quick. Load our brush up good. Because you really want this to stay together. You don't want your wing coming apart, so don't be stingy on this part. Just don't have it where you have epoxy gooping off of it. Okay. Just a nice, even coat. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and, on this part, I'm going to go ahead and stretch it out over our stiffening panel. Like so. It'll add just a little bit more strength to that. Kind of give it a plastic coating, if you will. Now we're going to flip our wing panel over. And get this other side here. Let's start up front and work our way to the back. Make sure there's plenty on there. Don't sting it. And then we're going to go ahead. We're going to put some here too because we need that to stiffen up. Get this glued down. Right back here. Don't, I mean... You want to be cautious around our control arms back here. We don't want to fill the holes in with epoxy. But, you know, we fiberglass this cloth around it. That's fine. We'll, uh, we have to. We'll use our Doomor or our die grinder to uh, break those out. And... That's how you fiberglass a wing in. Well, I guess now it's kind of bittersweet. All of our major construction is done. 
we're not going to construct anymore until we get the model covered. Um, that being said, we're making advancement, but we're done gluing stuff together. The structure's done. Um, we're going to cover that in next week's episode. And I said this week is going to be a short one if you paid attention to our Facebook page. Um, because covering is an entirely different element on its own and it deserves that kind of respect and we're going to give it that kind of respect. Couple things I do want to go over with you before we get into next week's episode. Um, couple tools you're going to need um, that I don't think I covered in the tooling you need for building, which that was covered for building, not covering. One thing you're going to need is a ceiling iron. Um, I've seen people use a household iron and it actually worked. But the problem that they run into is your household iron foot is like that wide and it's like that tall. You're gonna have a real hard time getting into tight spaces and the smaller the aircraft, the more tight spaces you're gonna to have to get into. These things are like 25, 30 bucks if I remember. I haven't bought one in a long time. My wife and I have been together for 17 years, 16, I'm sorry, seven, 16 years now. She bought this, she, she actually bought this set of tools I have for me that long ago. We weren't together very long. I needed some new stuff. And uh, one day she surprised me. I've, I've got a really cool wife. That's at a start that I'm, we're building in the other video. If it wasn't for her, it wouldn't be happening. Just like this PT-20, if it wasn't for tower hobbies, that wouldn't be happening. If you watch these videos, drop tower hobbies line, go to their Facebook page, send them a private message telling them you appreciate this kind of stuff. If, if you do. I'm not holding a gun to your head and making you do it, but uh, they would really like some feedback on this. Good, bad, and different. Um, just no news. I, I know no news is good news, but they would really like to hear if we're doing any good here, uh, promoting you to build uh, an airplane, whether it be an ARF or a kit. We'd like to see you build a kit because that's a dying art of the hobby. Anyway, I got off track there. You're going to need a ceiling iron. And what we're going to use this for is to actually go around the model and seal the monocoat to the wood frame, okay? And then you're also going to need a heat gun. Again, I think this one's like 30, 40 bucks. Like, like I say, I don't know. I had, they're a good set of tools you take care of, and they last forever. I hope I can pass this on to my son someday. But these are really good tools. are worth having. This heat gun is not like your one you find at your automotive store. It doesn't quite get that hot. I think it only blows up to about 800 degrees on the high setting. It's got high and low, of course. Zero off. Position one is cool air. Position two is hot air. You can still blow a hole in covering with this thing, which I'll show you. I'll set up a couple demonstration pieces of what's going to happen because there is a trick to laying covering out. And you'll have a lot better success if you have these two tools in your arsenal. If you don't have them, I highly suggest using them, getting them and use them. Together, you're probably looking probably 60, 70 bucks for the pair. But they'll last you forever if you take care of them. It's an it's a investment well worth it. So go to towerhobbies.com, look up your heat gun and ceiling iron, and you'll... Uh, you won't regret the investment. You're going to have to have them for their next for our next video. Um, we're creeping up on the end. And I uh, hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. I've hope, I really hope you guys have enjoyed the videos that we've done so far. Like I say, we still have a lot of work to do. Still have a long way to go before we do our maiden flight. But... Like I say, the construction's done. We're going to do a little bit of covering, and it's going to be like putting together an ARF then. Um, if you have any questions or comments, email me at uh, bigskyhobbycorner at gmail.com, or you can put them in the comments below. And please go by Facebook's uh, Tower Hobbies Facebook page. Give them a like. Tell them what you think about the video. Shoot them a private message. Uh, and if you haven't yet already, go to uh, Big Sky Hobby Corner on Facebook and uh, like our page there as well because you'll see photos and stuff of uh, things you won't necessarily see here on YouTube. And it works vice versa. You're going to see things here on YouTube you're not going to see on the Facebook page. So uh, with that being said, have a good weekend, everybody. God bless, and thank you for watching. We'll catch you next week.